And a lot of folks out there may think, well, why, why should I care that reporters are being spied on by the government? Why does it matter that the government is looking into reporters' activities? Well, it matters because if you want a free press, the press is not free if the government is snooping and looking through your records. And secondly, if you think about some of the, the greatest developments that we've heard about uh, and some of the most outrageous and controversial actions that an administration has taken over the last 10 years, we heard about those first because of reporters. I mean, the idea of uh, indefinite uh, detention we heard about that. Um, the, the NSA wiretaps, wiretaps and phone lines, we heard about that through James Risen in the New York Times. Uh, the horrible conditions that um, were, were confronting us because of that Walter Reed and the treatment of military veterans who were injured who were coming back and facing deplorable conditions. We heard about those because of Dana Priest at the Washington Post. And this involved the leak of information that government officials did not want out there. But thanks to dogged reporting, these reporters shined a light on what was going on, and it, prov it, it, it provoked and prompted an appropriate public discussion about the policies behind these. So if folks say, well, you know, who cares about reporters? I mean, here's, here's the other thing to keep in mind, is that our government leaks secret information all the time when it befits them. I mean, you go back to the beginning of, uh, of the Iraq War. Uh, uh, the Bush-Cheney administration, Vice President Cheney, Scooter Libby, the top aides were making the case for war. They were selectively cherry-picking secret intelligence information and leaking it out to reporters to try to make it seem as if Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Thankfully, there was at least a couple of reporters who were also able to obtain classified information that suggested there were doubts about the intelligence. Unfortunately, those reporters who were able to get those kinds of leaks, were able to get the classified information saying that there were serious doubts about the intelligence those were few and far between. The Clatchy newspapers was reporting that, but nobody really listened to them. Instead, there was this march off to war based on the Bush-Cheney assertions and based on selective leaks that they were putting on the front page of the Washington Post and the New York Times, making the situation with Saddam Hussein seem even scarier than it was. So if you think that you know, the government shouldn't be leaking classified information at all, and you're out there listening thinking, well, reporters... They shouldn't be reporting classified information. Well, think again, because the government uses this information whenever it's to their benefit and hates it when reporters shine a light on something that is controversial. Uh, but I, my argument is that, fine, if the government wants to shut down certain leaks, go after government officials. If they leak something you don't want, fine, go after them. But when you cross, -eyed, cross into the side of reporters and you're going after reporters and you're treating them like criminals in order to get the Justice Department to be able to search your records without even notifying you as a reporter, that's outrageous. And it's never happened before quite like this. Sure, there have been efforts to get a hold of reporter records, but as Daniel Aarons pointed out, in the past, this has meant going to the news organization saying, here are the records we would like to subpoena, here's why this is important to a criminal investigation, and something usually gets worked out, or there are arguments in front of a federal judge, and a federal judge decides. But in this case, the Obama Justice Department said, well, James Rosen could be a possible criminal, and so, therefore, the judge was able to grant a, a subpoena for all of his various phone records and personal records and cell phone records. I mean, it's outrageous. And, and the fact of the matter is some people say, well, what about James Rosen? He was trying to influence foreign policy. He was using sort of drop boxes and pseudonyms. He was taking all sorts of steps that reporters don't usually take to try to get the information. Well, that's true. And leave it to Fox not to mention some of that. But the motivations of James Rosen aren't that important. The broader principle here is that our government has gone much farther in trying to squelch reporters than it ever has before, and it's digging into reporters' records, and that is not the basis for a free press or a free society. That's why so many of us are outraged. Coming up, we're going to talk about the uh, gun march in Washington, D.C., the right to carry, the must-carry gun march. What are they all about? We'll talk about that in a few moments on Take Action News. <laughs> 